Catherine Ruinala has an international ministry where the Holy Spirit moves in prophecy and healings. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have access to the same power. Take a look. Imagine being at a concert and wearing a badge with full access into all areas. Catherine Ruonala says that kind of all access power is available to us when we pray. Catherine and her husband, Tom, pastor a church in Brisbane, Australia. She's also the host of her own TV show. Together, they've seen miracles happen around the world. In her book, Life with the Holy Spirit, Catherine shares how God moves in our lives and how we can experience a genuine encounter with the Holy Spirit. Well, please welcome Catherine back to the 700 Club. It's great to have you here. Oh, it's so lovely to be and here. Tonight, if you if you live in Virginia Beach, tonight we're going to have uh, a special healing service, a night of healing at the Regent University Chapel uh, from 7 to 11 p.m. So uh, come out and you can see Catherine in person. So I'm excited yeah. to do I'm, I'm very excited, excited about, about that. Too. Come Holy Spirit. Well, let's talk about that all-access pass. Um, what do you mean by that, and how do you get it? You know, I believe that every believer is called not just to survive, but to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that we impact the world around us. You know, people read about, in the, in the book of Acts, about Peter's shadow healing the sick, and they think, wow, wouldn't that be wonderful? But I believe that there is a divine invitation waiting in the Scripture looking for us to respond to and say, Holy Spirit, I want you to fill me up and, and satisfy every need that I have and then fill me to overflowing so that I can be used to meet the needs of the world around me. Because the Bible says that God was excited, Jesus was excited to go away, that the Holy Spirit would come so that the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the water covers the sea. And the same spirit that was upon him is upon us. And it's his spirit. And that's very exciting. All right. Well, let's talk about your journey. In your book, Life of the Holy Spirit, you talk about uh, two prayers from Ephesians that really had an impact on you. Oh, my goodness. Ephesians 3. Uh, 14 to 21, I, I personalized that and I prayed it for three months solid. I was such an insecure person. I, I came from a background of abuse and abandonment and rejection. And I was always worried about what people were thinking and always feeling so insecure. But I read, you know, that the perfect love of God casts out fear. And, and I also read that whatever I ask according to the will of God, I can have. So I, I saw this prayer for all the saints and thought, well, this is absolutely the will of God. I can believe that God will give me this. So I personalized it and I prayed it. Lord, fill me up to overflowing. Give me Holy Spirit strength to be able to comprehend this love that goes beyond human understanding and fill me up to overflowing. And I discovered that it's something that's not a one-off revelation, but a continuous thing that he wants to satisfy our deep needs for love to the point that it begins to activate our faith and cast out all fear and cause us to become new creations, absolutely different people where we're not self-absorbed, but overflowing with the Holy Spirit. And then there's this uh, other prayer in Ephesians 1 about knowing the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the Father giving us the Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, because the Holy Spirit reveals the Father to us, reveals the Son, so that we can know Him. And then in knowing Him, we get to know the hope of our calling, because He says, as He is, so are we in this world, which is stunning. A lot of people could read that, but actually believing it. I feel like there's a, an awakening happening right now where people are going to believe belief, it. But experience. Experience what it looks like to know, to know him and believe that by his grace, by his power, he has made us new so that we can do the things that he did when, and greater things when he walked the earth. It's not just, uh, you know, a, a big high dream. It's, it's a real thing that God wants us to experience, every one of us, so that the world around us, which is groaning and longing, I think, for people to wake up and see this, longing to see Christ manifested through us, his children. You had another thing that happened with your daughter where you had a revelation of how judgment can actually block the flow of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Wow. What happened? He's been so kind. Well, I have three children. And my eldest daughter walked away from God uh, in her teenage years. 
and it was devastating. I thought, not my family, and and I, you know, I cried and I cried and I prayed and I cried, and the Lord was so kind. He said at one stage, when I was in her room, preparing a room in faith that she was going to come home and come back to Christ, and He said, "I've prepared a room for my children too," and I, I began to just. Think, Lord, what does it look like? And we had an amazing thing happen where um, some some of our young people were led by the Holy Spirit to minister to her out on the street, not even knowing who she was. And uh, and bit by bit, her heart began to soften, and she began to come back to us as a family and to the Lord. But initially, when she started coming back, I would look at the things on the outside, the way she dressed, her attitude, and I think I'd try to be nice. On the outside, but on the inside, I'd be like, I don't like what you're wearing. I don't like that attitude. But、um, I'm trying to be loving. And every time I'd have these thoughts, I'd see her react, and、um, and it was just difficult. And then one day, the Lord spoke to me, and He said, "You know, your thoughts are defining her."、Mm. I thought, "What?" He said, "Well, you are the only representation of God she's actually seeing at the moment. And if you are judging her, she thinks God's judging her. And when when we feel judged, we react in defense." So he he challenged me to start seeing her. This is God who calls those things that be not as though they are. Start seeing her, imagining her as the woman of God she's called to be, as a as a believer, and start treating her and interacting with her as though she were already saved, already somebody that I would have great respect for. And the moment I started doing that and seeing her as she was going to be. Her heart just softened. Now we're like、mm. best friends. It's just so beautiful. She's in church every week, and just dropping those walls of judgment and all those things, it, it bothered me initially because I thought, well, if I'm not letting her know that I don't approve, then how's she going to know that it's wrong? And I had a dream, and in the dream, I took my daughter to the doctor, and the doctor brought out all these presents and gave them to her. And I was looking at the doctor, going, "What are you doing? I'm here so you can fix her." And the doctor looked at me really sternly, and he said, "You don't know how special she is." And when I woke up, I said to the Lord, "What, what are you saying?" And he just reminded me that I don't need to be worried about trying to correct her as an adult child. I don't need to be trying to judge her. I just need to lavish love on her and trust Him. And it was the goodness and kindness of God that led her to repentance. And I tell you,、yeah. it is so sweet now. And that's how God deals with us too. You know, we expect Him to tell us off, and when it, I come and say, "Lord, here I am. Tell me anything. I, I can take it." And He'll say, "I love you." And I'll be like, "Yeah, whatever. Come on, no, tell me it's serious. Deal with me." And He'll say, "I love you," until I can't handle it anymore, and I just give up and start believing it. And when I believe it, then. I don't want to do anything that would displease him. I want to. It, he's so wise. His ways are better than our ways, aren't they? Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to pray for you and your needs in just a few minutes. But here's a first: is a story of miraculous healing. Derek Pyle is a professional baseball player, and he knows that if you're injured, you can be replaced very quickly. So when Derek hurt his hip, he kept it to himself until it hurt so much he became desperate for relief. At 27 years old, Derek Piles was living his childhood dream. Well, I started playing when I was about six years old, and、um, I just always knew when I, I was a little boy I wanted to be a professional baseball player.、It's、something I feel like I was born to actually do. Definitely a God-given calling. Derek was in his seventh season with the AAA club when his right hip started hurting. I think the constant wear, wear and tear, you know, just just started getting worse and worse for about about eight months. As an outfielder and designated hitter, Derek relied on his speed, and the pain was slowing him down. Still, he continued to play and never told anyone about the injury. Players are dime a dozen, and if they hear that that you're injured, it could cost you a job really quick. But I know that it was a constant nagging inside the back of my mind, knowing that this was bad. You know, knowing that I really hadn't told the coaches, knowing that.、Um, You know, I, I wasn't at my very best. It was, it was just really frustrating. One night while on the road, Derek went to his hotel room after toughing out another game. But this time, he knew he couldn't play through the pain much longer, 
and feared this could be the end of his season and possibly his career. At that point in time, I was desperate, and I was just like, Lord, if you don't do something, I'm, I'm going to be going home for, for the summer, and it was time for him to either do something or I was going to be in really, tr really big trouble. You know, I, I, I flipped on, on the TV, and I've seen the 700 Club before, and it's just there, and, and it just seemed like the perfect timing, you know? As he watched, Gordon and Terry started praying. Someone else with problems in your right hip, and there's grinding in the joint, God's just gonna just give you back that hip joint, no pain, no discomfort uh, in anything that you do. And I just really, really felt his power begin to move on that, on that part of my body. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. That's when, you know, I, I, I just knew that God, that, like, like that was a true word from, from the Lord, and it was for me. And my pain level with the, the following day was pretty much nothing. Within about a day and a half, I noticed that it was completely better. I didn't feel like the popping out, out over the place or, you know, it, or grinding or anything like that. Derek played his next game and the rest of the season pain-free. The fact that I was able to finish the season was, was a big deal. And it wasn't just about me. I really want to go out e every year and really do well and, and, and see, see better for, for my family each year, too. Building on that successful season, Derek's career has continued to progress. He uses every opportunity to witness to teammates and fans about God's power to heal. We can pray big and pray small, you know, and, and really believe God for small things and pray for big things and pray for miracles. And, and as long as our heart's right to, to, to really honor the Lord with it and really give Him all, all the glory, then, then God will do great things with our lives. All we have to do is believe. Believe that it's for you. Believe that Jesus came for you, that he died on a cross for you, and that by his stripes, you are healed. Now, Catherine and I are going to pray. We're going to pray for you. And all you have to do is believe. Amen. So let's pray. Let's hold hands. Lord, we just come to you, and we come believing. And we just claim the word when two or more agree touching anything. It shall be done. Yes, Lord. So in an act of faith, if you're in the audience right now and you need healing, just reach forth your hand and touch that area. Catherine and I agree now Ooh, with Jesus you name. touching it and then say out loud over it, in Jesus' name, be healed Hallelujah. and be made whole. God just gave you something. Father, I just thank you so much for those that are watching. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that what they're sensing right now, Lord, is a gift of faith that you're releasing in their heart. And you say yes, just as they reach out right now. I thank you for healing. I thank you for someone with a lung condition right now being healed. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for someone else with an ulcer, someone with cancer. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit right now, touching them and setting them free. Nothing is impossible. And I thank you. Yes. Does God want to heal me? I can hear you saying that right now. Yes, he does. And right now he is present to heal. Nothing, nothing can separate you from his love. Right now I speak and declare the power of the Holy Spirit, touching and healing and restoring someone's back. Someone's uh, it's been really messed up through an accident. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for that broken back. Healed now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We I just yes. echo that. There's someone who your back is literally being straight and you're saying, I can't lay hands on it, but God's laying hands on it right now and it's being straightened. Someone else with Bell's palsy on the left side of your face and uh, there's also nerve pain associated with it and it's just excruciating for you. God is taking all of that away now in Jesus' name. Yay. Amen. Hallelujah. And amen. That's awesome. If you have been touched, we want to share your good report with the world. Give us a call and let us know. 1-800-700-7000.